Hello, Dave here. In this video, we're going to create a local development MongoDB environment in Windows 7. So let's start out at the MongoDB. Here's the site, mongodb.org. And this is a NoSQL database. And here's all the information. And let's go ahead and start out. Uh, I'd recommend going ahead and reading it in uh, like the JSON style documents and those kind of things. But let's go ahead. We're going to buzz through and get this rolling. It's straightforward and pretty simple. So I just uh, left this here. So I'll leave mongodbu.org there. Coming here, go to downloads. And my connection is nice and slow because I'm recording. <laughs> okay. And you'll see all the different environments. This is for Windows 7 64-bit. I'm going to go ahead and click download here. And it's downloading away. And it's only 62 megabytes. So the first step is actually download the source. And you'll notice if I go back to this page here, the current production release at the time of this video is 2.2.3. But basically, started out with their recommended download release nothing fancy nothing special going on and while that is downloading we'll just take a look at uh, one other thing here if you go to the docs here's all of the information what we're doing here is this getting started and it talks about installing here and here's the steps right here's the windows steps this is what we're going to be doing and if I go back up here, and once you start deciding to go into various, I'm just looking for, uh, develop with MongoDB, uh, some other pieces. There's information on, depending on what language you are doing. Let me see if I can get back to that page. And yeah, we're still downloading. So once, give me a moment here, and I'll go back here. Anyway, lots of stuff there. Let's go ahead and, oh, here it is, all the drivers. I'm sorry, it's over here on the side. So depending on what type of language you want to use, you can pick up the drivers over here, and that's for a future video. Our download is complete. So one manual, tons of good stuff out there. They really help you get through it. So now that we have it downloaded, right? So here's my downloads directory, and it shows there's, what, there's the zip that it downloaded. So what we need is a, is a place to put our, our extract and you can go with the defaults I'm not going to go with the defaults for this purpose it generally just puts it on your C drive and the default directory is a C colon database uh, data directory I'm going to go ahead and put it on my D drive and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this my dev Mongo DB folder and in this folder right now it's empty I'm gonna go ahead and create my Mongo data folder so I have a dev Mongo DB folder and a Mongo data folder so here, I can go ahead with my 7-zip, extract my files, and I'm going to extract that to my my dev MongoDB folder.
And now that that's done, we see that I've got this folder here. Now let me just go into it. And here's the bin where all the action is. Here's the actual EXEs that we're going to be using. So I'm just going to bring all of these guys up to this level, same level as the folder. And now I have the bin directly under my dev MongoDB. You don't have to do that, but it just saves uh, the directory string. So it's still here. Just created a copy of this bin folder, basically, is all you need, is to get these guys out there. And actually, what I want to do is leave it just like that. So, so we have, and that's basically installed MongoDB. Now, I want to create a... In this bin, I want to create a batch file for starting up. If, if I come back here and go back to that install, and install on Windows, here's where it shows that this is going to be the default data folder. But if you want to use a different data folder, which I'm doing, you would start MongoDB with this command here where you specify the path. Well, just to make it easy so I don't have to type this whole thing every time I start up, I'm going to create a little batch file for that. And that's what we're going to do right now. So if I come back to the right folder in my bin, right? So here's our, right? I'm in my D, my, Mon my dev MongoDB folder. Inside bin, in the same folder as my Mongo exe and my Mongo d.exe. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to put this in my path, and all I'll have to do is type this command. So I'm going to create a new text document, and I'm going to call it start mongo.bat. Create a little bat file. Say yes to go ahead and change that. Now let's go ahead and edit this with Notepad++. And I'm going to bring this guy over. So I have a very simple little guy here. And all I need to do is create, basically, this command here. So let's go ahead and copy it out of here, and we'll adjust it. So I'm going to do a Control-C for copy. Bring this guy back up. I'm going to paste that. Now let's go ahead and change this. So all I need here is MongoD, because I'm going to put it in my path. And then my path is going to be my D colon. And then I called it dev MongoDB backslash Mongo data. And I believe it doesn't matter whether you put the caps or not in here. Case It's case insensitive. But I'll go ahead and keep that there. Let's go ahead. I'm going to just click save there for the fun of it. Or because i got to save it at some point. So let me bring back up my... Here's my bin directory. And if I go back to, it's dev mongodb and it's mongodata. So let's look at that. Dev... MongoDB, dev MongoDB, MongoData, MongoData. Okay, so we downloaded, we created a batch file. So far, so good. Now, let's go ahead and do our path. So, I bring up my control panel here, right? If you came up to standard control panel, system and security, System, Advanced System Settings, and then Environment Variables, Path, and I'm just going to come back here to the end of the path, put on a semicolon for a new one, and I'm going to do D colon 
backslash dev. Well, let's go ahead and do case sensitive dev mongo db backslash bin. And this puts that in our path. So now we can execute our commands. And I just saved all those things. So now my environment var variable is all set. Now I can just execute startup. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we need a command prompt. You can do start run uh, cmd or uh, I, I keep a command prompt out there. You're going to have to use these all the time. We need one command prompt to run mongod and one command prompt for the shell that we're going to run commands through. So first we got to start mongod and the way we start that is with the mongod command and again I could enter D colon and go through all that kind of stuff, but since I created this guy, I'm just going to call start Mongo and it goes ahead and starts up. I get the security alert. I'm going to allow access and I have Mongo started. So this command prompt is happy as can be. Mongo's running right now, but in order to actually talk to it, I need another command prompt to run the Mongo shell. So here's a command prompt, and here's our Mongo shell. And now, in order to run the Mongo shell, we need to execute the actual Mongo command. And let me just show you that guy. Uh, let me bring up my other Explorer session here. So in the in our dev in our bin, we have Mongo D. This actually runs. That's what we're running here. This is our MongoD, and this is our Mongo database server, running happy as can be. And now, in order to run the shell, it's actually just Mongo, Mongo.exe. So right now, we're running MongoD and Mongo. And you'll notice down here, there is a Mongo S, and that's when you're doing shard. Uh, so that's a more advanced separate section and that's splitting it across many different databases. So let's come back here and now if I type Mongo, I'm in the Mongo shell. Notice it says connecting to test. I haven't done anything yet, but I'm in the Mongo shell and notice I have a, a prompt here with a carrot and now I can run Mongo commands. For example, I can run help and that shows all these fun commands, right, that you can run. And I'm just going to buzz through a couple of commands here to get things going. You can do a show databases, show DBS. And right now, there's only the local. And there's a, there's a test database out here. But let's go ahead and create one. And you just, it'll create one if it doesn't exist. So I'm going to say, so in order to use a new database, if the command is use, and I'm going to call it vid db for video database just for demo purposes now I'm switched to video db and let's take a look here if I look in that data oh look at that it started it created a mongo d lock and a journal in there and I created video db and there's no collections in there so if I do show Collections, there's nothing to show, so I can, let's create a collection. And you see up here, that's, I'm, I'm just taking this out of the, out of the help, show DBS, show collections. We're not going to mess with users or anything, but let's just make sure we got things working. So now, the way you work this, and it's kind of, and it's JavaScript type of command format. And I'm going to say DB, and then I give it a collection name, and I'm going to call it vid. COL for video collection. And let's go ahead and insert a, a record. I'm going to do insert. And it needs parentheses because it's a method. And everything is done in squiggly Java notation. I'm just going to create something quick here uh, to show that it's working. So let's just do key. It's key value pairs. So key one, uh, this is first 
field, comma, and key two, colon, second field. Okay, that was fun. So we went ahead and inserted something in there. And look at this. It created vidDB in here. And I have my, my video database now that I've inserted something in there. How do I know I inserted something? Well, let's do db.vidcal.find. And this returns a cursor. But since I only have one record, it's going to show me my one record. And it shows about 20. But here's that record. Well, that's kind of rough to see. And once again, I can just hit my arrow key to go through my previous ones. So now when I do show collections, oh, look at that. It shows me my vid col collection. And now when I do show dbs, it shows our vid db db. So very easy. Another quicky, easy command to see for the fun of it. I could do vid. Uh, there's also a find one command that'll get the first record that meets it. And anyway, so here's our thing. It automatically created this ID field with its universal or global unique identifier. And there's a, an algorithm for this, date and time stamp, and it's incrementing and, and unique. And there's always a key or index on this value. But anyway, we can do anything we want here. So if I come back here, and that's the beauty of it being no schema list. Well, I can come out here and I can do key three and uh, other stuff. Doesn't matter what I call it. And I just created another uh, command there. And if you want it to look nicer on the screen, there's a pretty function with the find. And it shows now I have these two documents in my database, right? Here's the first one. Here's the second one. And the beauty of this document notation is that you can embed documents within documents. For example, inside this key three, well, let's put the squigglies here. Inside this key three, I'm going to do uh, key five, colon, uh, key five stuff, comma, key six, colon, and I'll just do, this is the, whoa, did I just lose all that? See what happens when you try to get fancy in here? And it, anyway, let me just do that quick again. Sorry about that. So inside key three here, or let's just do a whole new one. And I'm going to say key seven. And, and let's embed something in here. And i got to have a comma after it. And I'll do key 77 seven, colon uh, data here, 77, seven, comma, key 88, eight, colon data here, 88. Eight. And just for the fun of it here, or let's go ahead and do that, right? So now notice that in this one, we have this embedded keys within this key, right? That's at a different level. And I don't want to go too much farther, but uh, one more for the fun of it is that we can also do arrays. So key array, and the array is like this. And we can do one, two, three, four, four, A, B. No, oh, I think these guys have to be in quotes. And we'll say 
array stuff. And we can even do, and I'll do comma. Uh, we can do an array in an array. And I'll do one, two, three. Uh, inside array. Anyway, you can get ridiculous here. And I'll just do a and last one. But anyway, now we can see that. Whoops. I am missing one of oh. See that? So it says I'm missing this colon. And if you look up here, my key array, I forgot I got the key, but I don't have the colon. Whoops. I don't have the colon in between there. So let's put our colon in there and hit enter and do our print. And here's our array, right? Here's our array and our array in an array. Anyway, there's the idea. There's Mongo. We're up and running. So step one, we downloaded Mongo. We created directories to place Mongo in. We created, we put Mongo in our path using our uh, control panel path variables. We did a batch file to make it easy to start and stop. Here we ran the Mongo database. That's this guy. And here we're running the Mongo shell to actually run commands against Mongo. There's other things to do, but we have Mongo up and running. And we see in here in our Mongo data that we created a database, vid database, and it's just keeping track of it, but that's where all of our data is going to be. So download it, unpack it, set your path up, and create a database directory for it. If you want to use C, C colon backslash data backslash DB, you're welcome, and it will work that way. And learn the commands and start running things and start creating documents. Thank you very much for watching.